Welcome to the Kingspiration Podcast. This is the place where you'll learn how to get unstuck and gain momentum in your life and business. Each week, we tackle the real aspects of entrepreneurship, personal development, relationships, and fitness. I'm your co-host, Ethan King, from Atlanta, Georgia, USA, entrepreneur, TEDx speaker, and best-selling author of Wealth Beyond Money. And I'm your co-host, Justin King, no relation to Ethan, from Cape Town, South Africa, entrepreneur, speaker, and business growth strategist. Our journey crosses continents and cultures, sharing wisdom and experiences to propel you forward. Welcome to Kingspiration. Let's start the conversation. On today's episode, we have a question that we're going to address here. Um, that someone asked, do you believe adding values to others creates success in our own lives and that you can't become successful just by focusing on your own goals and successes? So what do you think? We hear this all the time, Justin. It's like you know, share, give back to others, contribute to others, add value to others. I mean, we're doing that here on this podcast. But I guess this person is asking, is it really necessary to do that? And can you actually become successful just focusing on yourself and your own goals and successes? What are your thoughts on that, Justin? I feel like the this is a question that opens that can of worms because there's so many different so many different angles to take on this. First one, it really depends on what your def definition of success is. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we're talking about material success, are we just speaking about success as being content in mm -hmm. life? I, th I think it could change the the dialogue around this. I mean, from a personal standpoint, I think actually to achieve both, and this is an opinion, I, I think we do. We need to we need to live in a world, and I would like to live in a world where people perceive their own success to to be driven by by adding value to other people's lives, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things in in a lot of the leadership training that that we do, we speak about the fact that that leaders and managers they they achieve success through others. And I always stand up and I say, guys, what do you think that means to you? If you check, if as a manager or as a leader in an organization, you you um, achieve your success through your team, what does that mean? And there are mm -hmm. always these these different answers, but ultimately, what it what it means is that you might you might grow an individual to a point of view where they they have to leave your organization because they've outgrown what what you're able to to offer them. But that's not a failure because that person has has become something more. And that's, that's been as a direct result of, of that manager or of that leader in organization. And, that, and that's a success. So I try to, to get people to, to understand that. And that's a, a, a short story around it. But I think so much more success in your, in your life and um, in business in general and, and in your relationships. If you can see your success as being achieved through others, the impact that you have on their lives and the successes that they have, mm -hmm. that's a world that I want to, to live in, I think. Yeah, 100 percent. You know, I, when I was younger, I used to say that I wanted, in fact, I would tell my friends, I want to be rich, but I don't want anyone to know me or know, <laughs> know that I'm rich. I just want to get quietly like super rich and anonymous. That was that was my dream for the majority of my life. Um, but I noticed that after I started opening up and being more vulnerable and helping others, a lot of it through through EO and because um, that kind of pushes you to be more vulnerable. Um, but that's when I noticed that the my success started, you know, accelerating much, much faster. And um, I think that it's like there's the law of reciprocation, right, um, that Robert Cialdini yeah. talks about. But in that's, you know, if you do something for someone else, they're more likely to do something for you back. But I think I don't think it's as literal as that. I, but I do think it's kind of a law of the universe. Like the more you put out and genuinely have a spirit of wanting to help others, the more will come back to you. I mean, and it's more of like an energy feeling for me, at least in my life. And I've noticed that you know, ultra successful people like um we had a, a, an event last night with David Cummings, um, who's a billionaire, and I was there. He was my coach, my business coach for our accelerator group, uh, was it 11, 12 years ago when he was building up his company, Pardot. We actually used to meet in Pardot, and then we got an email one day that we'd be meeting in a different place because he sold his company for $100 million. We're like, Whoa! <laughs> This, this is cool. Like to be that up close 
to someone who's so so successful. And we really had no idea. I mean, we knew he was running a successful business, but we had no idea that he was building up a hundred million dollar company right there under our noses as we were meeting. And he sold it to Salesforce. And now uh, he told us last night that um, a decade later, Salesforce, that particular product is doing six hundred million dollars in revenue for Salesforce every year. So that was a great wow. investment for them. Obviously, wow. a nice payout for him and um, a huge success story. But I, just, I knew him because he was giving back. That's why I brought yeah. him up as an example. I love the example, and it makes me it makes me think of a, a slightly nuanced uh, question to this topic. So, can do we have to? Does it have to be success through others, like I said earlier, or or can you just have success but be very clear that it must not be at at the expense of others? Mm. Because I, I, now I'm wondering because if you if you have great success. If you create a hundred million dollar business, as long as it hasn't been at the expense of anybody else, that is absolutely without doubt creating massive value for hundreds, thousands of, of other people's lives. Mm -hmm. But you didn't necessarily have to go out with a primary intention of creating value for others, but you were very clear on, I don't want it to be at the, um, to the detriment of others or at the expense of others. So, what are your thoughts on on that nuanced uh, kind of view on it? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a spectrum, right? But yes, like do no harm to others. I mean, I think you're definitely going to sleep better at night. But there, but there are probably those stories of people who totally just shit on other people and sleep perfectly fine at night. You know, I, yeah, I, I imagine they're out there. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I don't run in those circles, so I don't know any of those yeah. people. But I do wonder, you know, it, here in Atlanta, we the one of the nicer parts of the city is called Buckhead. Um, it's like the wealthier part of town. And when I drive through Buckhead, I mean, in these you're driving past estates with iron gates and everything. And I always wonder, like, oh, wow, I wonder who lives there and what do they do for a living and how did they amass this wealth? Is it generational wealth? You know, was it passed down from their grandfather or whatever? Um, but I always think about these different stories and um, it, you know, there, there obviously are some people who are just anonymously wealthy and don't care about sharing and giving back to others. Yeah. Um, or they may just, you know, be, I guess the type of Ebenezer Scrooge type people do exist, but I, I can't think of any that I know as an example, um, there's even one guy who, um, who, who I know is extremely wealthy and um, doesn't have a, a family to leave his, uh, he has no kids, no, no wife, no, no one to leave his wealth to, but, you know, a nice sub substantial amount of money in the bank, millions and millions. And I was wondering myself, like, what motivates you? And I, I asked him, I was like, what, what motivates you? And he says, I've always just been fascinated with, with money. Uh, because I grew up poor, I saw my dad go through bankruptcy, and I remember what that took us through, uh, and the pain that that took us through as a family. And what I saw him go through, and he never fully recovered from it. His dad, so he's always just felt a certain way about money, and he's I admire his uh, stinginess, his frugalness, and but because of that, he has a hugely profitable company, and he's doing very, very well for himself. So a lot of it is, I guess, is shaped in childhood. Um, but I, I guess you don't have to share, right? I don't think it's necessary. There's probably people out there who, um, yeah. who don't give back but are doing well financially. You know? uh, 100%. What you've made me think about now is how much of this is is shaped by one's environment. So you, you're based in Atlanta in the US. I'm, I'm down in Cape Town in South Africa. And, and obviously in South Africa, we have this huge disparity between the wealthy and and people who just cannot afford to eat. Mm. Um, and that's a huge percentage of our population. So social entrepreneurship in South Africa is a big thing where people mm. are starting businesses because their pure intention is how can we help these people? Like I see, I drive around and at every, every traffic light I stop at, there's somebody asking for money because they just cannot, they, they've got mm. no food to eat. They can't, they can't feed their children. So again, I think just like we, we, a product of our environments as kids as we grow up. I think to a degree as entrepreneurs, we're also a product of 
of our environment because we we're picking up what what problems there are to be solved, which is what what entrepreneurs do. Um, mm-hmm. But it, I think in a place like South Africa, it would be interesting. I'd love to see the stats as, from a social entrepreneurship point of view. Is it is it higher in a country than than South Africa, uh, like South Africa, than in the US or or other mm-hmm. other Western Western uh, cultures and and countries? It would be quite interesting to see. It would, yeah. The the income disparity because when it, you know I visited South Africa and. Um, I obviously made my contribution because my cell phone was stolen by some some kids in Cape Town, but it's all good. <laughs> your fault. It's your fault. Don't give us a bad rap. <laughs> it is my fault. It is 100% my fault. I wasn't paying attention to my surroundings, but <laughs> hey, they needed it more than I did. I have insurance. I'm good. No one was harmed. Uh, but I did notice the income disparity is massive uh, there. Yeah. And in Kenya, I was in Kenya last year in the summer and we we literally went from mansions to Kibera, which is the largest slum in all of Africa. And uh, we toured a school there. And I mean, it, it was just, I mean, the, the stench of urine and the, in the streets and uh, it was, it was heartbreaking, but you know, I noticed those kids are, were super happy and I took my kids there too, so that they could see and experience that and realize how fortunate they are. That's kind of getting into a different topic. Um, I think that was a great, uh, episodes and food for thought there, you know, let us know what you guys think, shoot us a message and uh, let us know if you're out there sharing your goodness with the world, or if you think you should just keep it to yourself. That's a wrap for today's episode of Kingspiration. We hope this conversation sparked insights to ignite action in your life and business. We're on this journey together, sharing our challenges and successes to help all of us take the next step towards building momentum and ultimately reaching our goals. If you found value in today's episode, please share it with someone else who might benefit and leave us a five-star review. And remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on our weekly conversations. Until next time, keep rolling, keep growing, and keep being inspired.